Hey everybody, Adam here for True North Wilds, back for a few days in between outdoor adventures. I want to tell you about my first trip that I did um, last week to Coal Lake up the Rabbit River. The Rabbit River is a canoe route in Nopeming Provincial Park. It's actually my favorite park to visit. I've been in a lot of different provincial parks. I've been in some of the national parks. Uh, Nopeming has a special place in my heart. This is a canoe route that I have gone to for three years in a row now. I absolutely love it and I'm going to share the experience with you here and give you a little walkthrough of the route and uh, how our trip went overall. It was really nice as soon as we got there we uh, started unloading and we could see that the water levels were really high. This is actually the highest that the water has been in the three years so far that I've been going there. The first year I went there we actually had to, it's a 15 kilometer route and we actually had to get out and walk for probably two or three kilometers. Um, just because the water was that shallow. This year, no such problem. We didn't have to get out and walk anywhere other than the actual portages, so that was really nice. So we got unloaded, got everything in the water. We brought a lot of gear. We had the luxury of, uh, Riley had a canoe, so Riley and Neil were in the canoe, and with a canoe you can just bring so much more stuff than the kayak, because you don't have to worry about fitting it on the inside of the hull. So you can actually bring coolers and bins and uh, things like that so uh, we had a pretty luxury camp set up just because of the sheer amount of gear we were able to bring which was really nice the river itself is really nice it starts off fairly small the launch point is not very wide at all it's maybe 15 feet across and it's only maybe a foot or two deep but you quickly get out of that windy section and you, you come to the first lake there's a lot of campsites there it's very popular for a lot of people to just go into the first lake um, and just camp there because it's a nice short maybe an hour paddle if you really take it slow uh, So we pushed on through that and as soon as you get through that first lake the river just opens up. It's nice and wide It's windy in some spots, but for the most part It's fairly straight and it's fairly deep and it's fairly wide. It's just a joy to paddle The portages on the Rabbit River are relatively easy. They're very beginner friendly They're all fairly short and they're all fairly easy the only difficult one is the first one, and that's only if you try and go over the beaver dam rather than take the actual portage route. With the kayaks, on almost every portage, we can just pull through the rapids, pull over the rocks, and we don't have to unload or anything like that. We don't have to take the portage route. <laughs> the first portage, however, is a little bit different, and Cam learned that the hard way. We all went up the portage route, he figured that he could easily pull over the beaver dam. And so, of course, we shouted encouragement and stood there and uh, watched him struggle. It was a lot of fun, and it was a good introduction for the guys um, for portaging. This is uh, Cam Duncan portaging. He kind of looks like he's trying to have a poop. I know. I've been here. <laughs> Should we go help him or just watch him struggle? Oh, he's got it. He's good. He's good. Yeah, he's got her. Eventually he got over it and we carried on. The rest of the portages were really nice. They're all nice, shallow rapids. You just have to go through some rocks. On the kayaks, we get out, we pull through them, and we just walk through the rapids and pull the kayaks behind us, drag them over the rocks. It's really easy. It doesn't matter how loaded down the kayak is. With the water levels the way they were this year, we had no issues whatsoever. The guys in the canoe, they just pulled up to the portage, they portaged everything over real quick and generally they were ready on the other side by the time that we had walked the rapids. So everything worked out really well for the portages. We got to Coal Lake and we uh, got to the campsite. The campsite that I chose is the same one that I've gone to for the last three years now. I absolutely love it. It's got this big beautiful shoreline, 
The shore fishing is really nice off of it. There's a ton of space for tents. There's a ton of space for cooking. There's a nice fire pit. Everything that you could want in a campsite, um, this site has. And so I always go back to this site and I will probably always go back to this site every time that I do this route. The first evening that we got there, we didn't do much. We set up camp real quick and uh, we didn't go out fishing for the evening. We had already had enough paddling for the day. It took us about seven hours to get into the site. Um, so the guys fished offshore. I got supper ready. All in all, it was a nice, calm, pleasant evening. And we were pretty tired from the fresh air and the paddling. So we all generally went to bed fairly early the first night. So the second day is where things got interesting. The fishing on this lake has always in past years when I've gone been really, really fantastic. I have a honey hole that has never, ever failed to produce. This year was different. We were in two weeks earlier than any of my previous trips, so that affected the fishing. Also, we've had a really long, cold, drawn out spring. The water temperature was still really cold. It wasn't, I'm not even sure if it was 50 degrees uh, Fahrenheit yet. And so just nothing was biting. We ended up spending most of the day just exploring the lake, trying to find the fish. We stopped at my honey hole. That didn't produce for the first time ever. Um, but we had a really good time casting throughout the lake. Uh, we went and we explored all over the place. It's such a beautiful lake. The terrain there is just so beautiful. It's pure Canadian shield and you can't ask for anything more than that. We had a nice sunny day. We had a really good paddle. We didn't catch supper, unfortunately, but we had tons of food. We came very prepared. So all in all, it was a really good day. Where we really started to pick up a lot of fish was actually offshore from the campsite. Anytime that we were sitting at camp, we would be casting. Um, everybody would have a line in the water and trying various things. And generally we did pretty well. We caught a lot of nice little pike offshore. Neil in particular caught a lot of pike offshore. Uh, it just all in all, it was a really pleasant camping experience to be able to just, you know, do a little fishing offshore and actually catch something, even if we weren't necessarily catching dinner. It made the disappointment of not finding the fish on the lake a little bit easier to bear for that day when we could just fish for the evening and, and pull things on shore at least every now and then. Of course, what's camping without a little afternoon nap? And what better place to do it than on the rocks, in the sun, nice and comfy. Apparently the guys thought it was pretty funny. They took a recording of me laying out here uh, starfished and snoring and they thought it was pretty funny, but I'll tell you, I was comfy. Is that agnal respirations? Should we start CPR? On the second day, we had to fight with a lot of wind. It was just coming in at the right direction that we really couldn't do anything cooking wise unless we set up a shelter. So we set up this barrier. We made a, a shelter out of tarps. We had an overhead tarp to, in, just in case it rained. And we set up this other tarp in front to just give us some sort of a wind block. It ended up working really well. Managed to do all our cooking there really easy. So all in all, it was a, a really nice feature to have. It's kind of a pain that we had to set it up in the first place. It would have been nice to have a calm day, but once it was set up, everything went really smooth. So really can't complain too much about that. We didn't see a ton of wildlife while we were out there. We saw, of course, a whole bunch of eagles, including a really big eagle sitting on a rock right on the shoreline. And it sat there for a little while until we got close and then it took off. Of course, we saw lots of turtles sunning themselves on rocks. Um, other than that, we didn't really see a lot for wildlife, which is unusual. But I think, again, it's because we had such a cold spring. I don't think a whole lot of stuff was really out and moving. In previous years, we've seen uh, on the way in, we've seen moose and we've seen deer and we've seen bear and uh, things like that. So this trip was a little bit shy on the wildlife, but I think it's because of the spring. While we were exploring the lake, Cam and I actually went to the very far north end where there's a big bay and there's a creek coming into it. We had seen it on Google Earth and uh, identified it as a point of interest that we really wanted to check out and try fishing there. And maybe if it was deep enough, go paddling up a little ways and, and see what it connected to. So we made the trip up to the north bay there. We found this really cool creek coming through. It wasn't, it wasn't able to be paddled. It was, uh, it was fast and it was shallow and it was basically just a set of rapids coming into Coal Lake. But we hiked up and uh, it opened up a little bit into a little bit of a wider area. We threw a line in, fished a little bit, relaxed a little bit. It was a neat little area to check out and I'm glad that we went up and checked it. It was actually the first time in three years that I had been to the far north side of the lake. So that was pretty cool.
So the second full day that we were there, the uh, the last full day that we were going to be there, even though the fishing was extremely tough, we did manage to pull in a, a stringer of walleye, enough to have a little appetizer fish fry before our main meal. So that was really nice and rewarding to actually be able to have some fish out camping. It's the one thing about camping is you really want to have that fresh fish. It's what makes the whole experience when you go out fishing like this. I let Cam use the Kabonker tool um, or the combo tool as it's officially known from Lucky Bug. He cleaned all the fish, uh, used the filleting knife that comes in the Bonker tool. Uh, he was really impressed with it and he gave us all a little tutorial on his style of filleting the fish, which was really useful and interesting and actually worked really well. <laughs> thing is actually awesome. Interesting way for you. You, you go down to uh, the ribs, then you just roll along the ribs. This knife is really sharp and it's amazing. So the morning of the fourth day, that morning we packed everything up, we cleaned up all our garbage, we made sure not to leave anything behind. It's one thing that I uh, feel very strongly about is leaving a campsite as clean as possible when you leave. Um, and we headed out. It was a real brutal paddle on the way out. We had, I looked afterwards and the winds were gusting, I think something along the lines of 60 or 70 kilometers an hour and it was right in our face the entire way out. So paddling out was a pretty miserable experience. But eventually we made it, we got to the launch. We were all very, very happy to get to the launch. We were all very cold from the wind and uh, tired and sore and just happy to finally be back on land. So dragged everything up onto shore, got it all unloaded, got it into the trucks and <laughs> headed home with the heat on full blast. All in all, it was a really great experience. Like I said, other than the wind on the way out, which was pretty miserable, um, fishing was tough, you know, the wind, kind of messed with our camp a little bit, but that's stuff that you kind of have to expect and you just roll with it as it happens. All in all, it was a great experience. Cam and Neil had never been to this route before, um, so it was really awesome to sort of introduce them to this canoe route and this campsite. They had a blast. Riley, of course, was there with me last year. Um, he enjoyed it a lot again this year as well. Everybody had a great time. Everybody got along great. All the paddling and the packing and the camp and everything just worked out really, really well. So thanks to those guys for really making it a good experience. Um, I'm, I'm glad that they all had fun and I'm hoping that they'll be back in future years as well. If you're not already, don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash True North Wilds, on Instagram at True North Wilds, and of course our blog site, as I just mentioned, truenorthwilds.com. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions about this route, what you think of the footage. Let me know what you think of this format of video that I'm doing for this trip report and if it's something I should continue for other trips that will be coming up. Um, as always, like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot for the channel. Uh, and as usual, thanks for watching. And until next time, I will see you outside.